Welcome back to tonight on Breaking. It's now 10 weeks to the 2023 general elections and Bola Tinibu was at Chatham House in London. Earlier this week, the presidential candidate of the APC, Bola Tinibu, was invited to an event organized by Chatham House. Chatham House is an independent institute that provides commentary on world events and offers solutions to global challenges. During the event, Tinubu gave a presentation on the topic, Nigeria's 2023 elections, and highlighted some of the policies he wants to pursue if he's elected. Tinubu spoke for about 25 minutes, and after his presentation, members of the audience asked him follow-up questions concerning insecurity, OETF, education, and economy, and how he plans to address crisis in those areas if he becomes president. Here, I want you to watch his response. So what are your plans for, for, for youth, young people? If you would like to answer the questions, Mr. Tunumbu. I will choose the first question, assign it to Dele Alake. Okay. And the second question, assign to Nasiru Erufai. <laughs> <laughs> and third question, assign to To ben Ayade. So after the questions were asked, Tinibu assigned the questions to members of his team. His explanation was that he wanted to demonstrate his philosophy about teamwork. The question and answer session lasted for about 40 minutes, and during that time, 10 questions were asked. Tinibu answered four of them directly and outsourced six of them to members of his team, which included Governor Nasiri Erufai. Dele Alake, the Director of Strategic Communication of the APC Presidential Campaign Council, Wale Edun, the former Commissioner for Finance in Lagos State, Femi Bajabiamila, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Ben Ayade, Governor of Cross River State, and Dr. Beta Edu, APC National Women's Leader. Nigerians immediately reacted like this. <laughs> Tinobu, Tinobu, you go to Chatham House today. Uh -uh. But all these questions that you are sharing, Tinubu, there is God. Oh. The questions you are supposed to be answering, you are sharing. Why are you sharing these questions? Eh? You are assigning questions. Are you surprised? I'm not that surprised. Tinubu has been telling us from the one that if or when he wins the election, he intends to bring on a team of people to help him run the country. That's to be expected of any president. We expect presidents to have teams that they delegate work to after they win. After they win. But before that, we expect to hear things directly from the team leader so that we can decide if the head of the team is of sound mind and body to lead the team. But you know what? And hear me out before you cuss me in the comments. Tinibu just did us a favor. They say that when you marry a person, you don't just marry that person, you marry their entire family. Instead of waiting to reveal who his team will be at a much later time, he's actually telling us the type of people he will bring on board. So for anyone who chooses to vote for the Tinibu administration, you know exactly who the cast of characters will be. Can we say the same for an Obi administration or an Atiku administration or a Kwankwaso administration? As far as we can tell right now, if Obi wins, it's just him and maybe Dati. If Atiku wins, we are going to see some serious begging from Wiki. And if Kwankwaso wins, well, he might just make things up as he goes along. So whoever we choose to marry in 2023, we need to know who they are bringing along. Because four years can feel like an eternity when you don't like your mother-in-law. Moving on, during his presentation at Chatham House, Tinubu was asked why he's avoiding one-on-one -on -one interviews with local media. This was his response. One conversation. Uh, 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 excuse me. Uh, 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 Please, be quiet. Why? I see myself as a marketable individual. <laughs> Want to use me to make money? And I'm saying no. <laughs> By the way, right after giving that answer, he sat down and made money for the BBC. Tinibu granted a short one-on-one -on -one interview with BBC Africa where he answered a series of questions, including a question about how he made his money. We include a link to the interview in the episode description. In other news, the WHO is recommending mpox as the new name for the monkeypox disease. Monkeypox is a viral disease caused by the monkeypox virus, and it can be spread between people and animals. 
It causes flu-like symptoms such as fever and chills and a rash that can take weeks to clear. The monkeypox was first named in 1970 after the virus that causes the disease was discovered in captive monkeys in Africa, hence the name monkeypox. But according to WHO, the monkeypox name plays into racist and stigmatizing language about black and African people. So instead, the WHO will begin to use a new preferred name called Mpox as a synonym for monkeypox. I would like to submit to the WHO that chickenpox is an insult to all cowards and should be called seapox from now on. Cowpox is clearly an attack on overweight people and should be called seapox as well. Although, I guess that could be confused with chickenpox. I mean, there's also skunkpox, raccoonpox, camelpox. Do we change all of those as well? First of all, the question we should be asking is, why is there an association between black and African people and monkeys? Because in every picture that I've seen of the evolution of man, like this one, the white guy at the end is the one who came from monkeys. Look, no matter what new name we change it to, if people are determined to misuse and to weaponize a name in order to isolate, discriminate, or stigmatize people, they'll do that. I'm just saying that the evidence is clear who came from monkeys. Moving on, on Tuesday this week, CBN announced that starting January 9th next year, personal cash withdrawals from ATMs will be limited to 20,000 Naira per day and 100,000 Naira per week. In addition, CBN directed banks to load only denominations of 200 Naira and below into their ATMs. These limits do not apply to electronic transactions. This is an effort to spread the new Naira into the hands of the public and mop up the old ones and also push us closer to becoming a cashless society. The CBM policy does allow an exception for compelling circumstances where an individual can withdraw up to 5 million naira once per month. You're probably wondering, what is a compelling circumstance? Well, say you get kidnapped. The kidnappers now know that your ransom is limited to 5 million naira per month if they are willing to maintain you and your upkeep expenses for that month. Otherwise, they can collect up to 100,000 naira and release you in one week. That's all for tonight on Breaking. I'm Johnny Woody. INX says we can collect our PVC starting Monday 12th, December 2022 until Sunday 22nd, January 2023. PVCs can be collected from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. daily, including Saturdays and Sundays. Make sure you make time to collect. Thank you.